Okay, everyone, I wanted to go over again um, naming of child clones. I know on Monday we kind of went over um, briefly the IUPAC naming system. I wanted to show you that again. In addition, I wanted to add one other naming system that you need to know, which is a common name, which is like naming it using the word child cone as the parent name. So for the IUPAC naming system, if you remember that this particular component here, That particular component is a propeen. And how we number it, we number it here, one, two, three, I'm sorry, a propanone. So if we are naming it as a propanone, it will be prop, because there's three carbons, prop, two, ene, one, own. And that will be the parent name for this particular compound. Then we have to focus on these um, substituents. There's one there and one there. This substituent, we start numbering this way, one, two, three, and it'll be three bromophenol. And the one on this side, one, two, three, four, this will be four methylphenol. Now we just put those names together. So this one goes first because it's a B, so B before M. So it's on the one side, so it'll be one, three, bromophenol. Three, four, methylphenol. And then we add the parent name, prop 2 en one own. And again, keeping in mind that this particular um, double bond here, whether it's an E or Z configuration, and this is the E configuration, which is the same as kind of like trans. So we would like to put an E at the front here before we put our name. So then it will be E, 1, 3 bromophenol, 3, 4 methylphenol, prop, 2, ene, 1, ohm. And the other way I wanted to show you is how to name it in terms of a chalcone. If you just had a phenyl ring with no substituents, that particular compound, meaning that it does not have a bromine, it doesn't have a, a methyl group, it's just two phenyl rings with the propanone in the middle, that's just going to be called chalcone. But when we consider both sides of the chalcone, how we do it is we still number here. So this part is still going to be 3-bromo, uh, right? And this part here is still going to be 4-methyl. But to distinguish which side of the child cone is on, we use a prime or no prime. So on this side, you will have 4-methyl, but on this side, we will call it 3-prime bromo. The prime just distinguishes that this particular substituent is on the right side. That means it's on the side of the ketone. So when we put it together, it would just say 3-prime bromo, 4-methyl so here's another example. Um, again, you still maintain the same parent name, prop, two, in, one, own. And so uh, this side here will just be phenyl because it has no substituents on it. And then this side, again, this one would just be 3 isopropyl. Sorry. So this is a 3 isopropyl, because this is the isopropyl group, isopropyl phenyl. And you go ahead and you put those together again. So you'll have three. 
that again remember this is one two three so it's on the three side so three three isopropyl phenyl and one phenyl prop two in one ohm. Similarly, when you uh, name this one, again, this is Tessa Chalcone. You don't have to name this side because it's understood that that uh, doesn't have any substituents. But this side, you still have that isopropyl. So you have isopropyl, three isopropyl. So when you write it, you will just have three isopropyl chalcone. And so there you have two different examples of how to name your child home.